what you have done here, that drama presentation carries so much weight. And I'm telling you, I see you on stages around the nations of the world. And you will minister to even kings, president, ministers mm -hmm. in drama, and you will bring the gospel to them. Hallelujah. God will continue to give you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I also welcome those who are online. May the Lord bless you real good. You are all welcome to this month of May, which is our month of partnership. Hallelujah. The May, May is the fifth month, and as I mentioned when we are praying this morning, five represents grace. And we thank God for the sustaining grace. And the grace that has brought you this far, I pray that grace will take you to the end of this year in the name of Jesus. And I want to remind you one of the promises of God for us in this house is that every child of this house, Royal Assembly Abandoned Life Ministry, will not partake in any virus. COVID 19 will not come near you. Hallelujah. That is what the Lord said, and we stood on that word, that his protection is upon us. Keep on doing what the government said you should do, but don't panic. It will not touch you, because the hand of God is upon you. Hallelujah. And I pray that the grace of God will be sufficient for all of us. Amen. So today, we will start on our journey on talking, talking about partnership. And uh, today, I'm just going to lay foundation. We will continue as the Lord lead us. But as also is our tradition, I do not intend to spend time in the world. This is the first Sunday of the month. And every first Sunday of the month, we release prophetic blessing over the children hallelujah so as a father i will be blessing my children as the lord said you should bless them so prepare your heart to receive from the throne of god hallelujah amen we have we've been having a wonderful time from the first praise the prayer in fact i thought we could have ended the the, the, the service during the praise and the worship, but we need to share this so that we can have the right perception as we walk in this month. Amen. Let's read the word of God. Are you ready this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Are we going to read the scripture? Hallelujah. The book of John, chapter 15. And John, chapter 15, is our theme scripture for, for this month. John, chapter 15. Hallelujah. The next one. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hmm? I don't know. All right. To play blues, blues, we got to find them. Um, Today. Right. Office, you can go to the church. I thought they are also on us, but they decided. To what is it? Okay, enjoy. Enjoy your service. Keep on peace. Hallelujah. Are we there? John chapter 15. We're going to read from verse 1 to 5. If you are there, can I hear your email? Hallelujah. Let's I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes the and Every branch that continues to bear fruit, I'm reading from the other And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes. So that it will be richer and finer. Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have given to you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Verse 4. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, never, neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith. Unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Father, bless the reading of this word. Speak to us this morning. Reveal your hearts to us so that we can continue to bear fruit, much finer fruit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. So as we start this journey, I want to talk to us about being in partnership with God. In partnership with God. Hallelujah. All over the world, you will hear the word partnership. Businesses go into partnership, isn't it? Government go into partnership. The latest thing that is happening now is private uh, uh, public partnership, PPP. That is where government avail resources and allow individual entity to run those things for them. Then they share, then they profit. Hallelujah. I remember uh, a story that I once read in the year 1904. It's very, very, very far in the United States of America. There was a heat wave. And one man decided, I, I, I am going to solve the solution. I'm going to bring solution for this heat wave. So he came with ice cream and he started selling ice cream to the people. Now, people were queuing to buy the ice cream, but there arose a problem. People were tired of queuing because this guy has few cups to serve the ice cream. And when people finish eating the ice cream, they return these ice cream cups in the wash. And people from other states were coming, so he could not meet the demand. But next to him was another guy who was making work, and his business was not going well. Every day he will see it and he will watch the man and the people queuing up and the problem is happening. So he decided to, to shape his work in form of a coal. And he went to this guy producing ice cream and he said, can you put your ice cream in this cone and let's see how it, it, it will work. So the guy put the ice cream in the coal and that was the beginning of coal ice cream. So they partner together. So these guys, as a product, he want to sell. This other one is also having a challenge. So they have to come into union, and this partnership was born. Hallelujah. Now, in the body of Christ, we also hear partnership. And when we hear partnership, our mind runs straight to money and money alone. And you can't blame people. Do you know why? Have you ever watched a TV program? You enjoy the program. It's very wonderful. And at the end of the program, somebody will come, either the preacher himself or somebody from the ministry, and say, thank you for watching our program. And that we want you to partner with this ministry, Solomon Gatling and Collection Ministry. And when you partner with us, we will be able to take the gospel to the ends of the world. Partner with us with $50, and we will send you a CD of the message. Have you ever heard that? It's one way, but partnership does not limit to that. And what happened is that this person who is broke, who is unemployed, sitting at home and is looking for something to edify him, will listen to this word and be blessed. But when it comes to that partnership, every word is gone because it becomes angry. And he will say, it's all about money. Because we partner. But there is more to partnership. Somebody say there is more. There is more. Hallelujah. Partnership goes deeper than that. So when you talk of partnership, what are we talking about? In the context of the kingdom of God. So the partnership I'm talking about here is not solely the partnership that you find in the world. We are talking about partnership in the kingdom of God. God created Adam and Eve. 
The enemy came in Genesis chapter 3. It distorted the old view of God. Sin entered. And since then, God has been trying to reconcile men unto him. Until the day he gave his son. That the Bible said in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever, whosoever received this son, we have what? Eternal life. Hallelujah. So the, the, the God has an agenda. And the agenda is to reconcile men to him. So he sent his son, and his son made a pathway. And it is left for men to come to the knowledge so that people can be harvested from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. So when you talk about partnership, there is a vision, there is a goal, there is something that needs to be made. So God wants souls. He wants people to come to the knowledge. Jesus has come. And God is thinking of partnership. Now, when you look at the word partnership, it speaks of fellowship. Partnership speaks of relationship. If you read the Bible, partnership talks about fellow laborers. It speaks about being associated with one another. It talks about being a partaker of certain things, being a companion with each other. You cannot be in partnership with someone if you don't have relationship. So in the business world, if people come and say, I want to go into partnership with you, the first thing they will do, they say, let us go for dinner, let us go for lunch, let us go for coffee, so that we can get to know each other. Hallelujah. You can't just go into partnership with someone if you don't get to know what this person is all about. You may, have, you may have heard about them, you may have read about them, but you want to get in contact with this person. And one of the elements in partnership that make partnership to work is integrity. Hallelujah. Please hold on and go to unpack all these things because the essence of my sharing this word is to bring us to the knowledge of why you woke up this morning. There is a reason why God did not allow COVID-19 to kill you in 2020. There is a reason why God gave you that job. There's a reason why you are in health. There's a reason why you can see, you can talk, you can speak this morning. There is a reason. When God blessed the children of Israel, he told Moses, tell them not to forget that it is me who blessed them and made them to be rich. Why? Because there is a reason. I'm going to see that reason. Hallelujah. In the book of John chapter 15, I've been reading this scripture until the Lord opened my eyes to it and said, look at Jesus. He's not just talking about the branches and the tree. Jesus is talking about partnership here. So Jesus began to explain to us that we are in a relationship and that relationship is about partnership. Who are the parties in this partnership? We have Jesus, who is the vine. He said, I am the vine. You have the pruner, the vine dresser, who is the father. And these two are in heaven and they have, an, they, they have a vision, they have a, a, a purpose. And what is that purpose? It's for fruits to be produced. So the vine dresser cannot produce fruit himself. The vine does not produce fruit, but they need something to produce fruit, and that is the branch. And you are the third person in this partnership relationship. You are the vine. And the purpose of the vine is to produce fruit. Who needs the fruit? The father and the son. But they cannot produce the fruit themselves. So they need the branch. And you are the branch who should produce the fruit. So the father, the son, and yourself now forms a partnership to produce what? To produce fruit. 
That is the aim of this relationship. The relationship is all about fruit. That's why he said, the Father will make sure that the branch that remains will continue to bear fruit and more fruit because God is interested in the fruit. The question now is, what is the fruit? Number one, the fruit is the soul that you use your life to direct to the kingdom of God. The fruit is the righteous life you live that attracts people to the kingdom of God. That's just it. Everything that you have, your life, your skill, your gift, your beauty, your voice, everything is supposed to be used to produce fruit. Jesus talked about the, the, the parable of the talent. He gave to one, one, to another one, five, to another one, ten. The one with one, very, only the one with five and ten multiply. And he was trying to use that to tell us your purpose here on earth is to do what? It's to bear fruit. The job you have is not just for you to take the money, eat, enjoy, and post on social media. It is to bear fruit. God is interested in the fruit you are bearing. You should ask yourself, since I have been born again, since I have been serving God, how much fruit have I produced? Are we together this morning? The fruit, the find is all about the souls that come to the kingdom of God. When you say, Lord, heal me. Why should he heal you? Lord, bless me. Why should he bless you? Lord, lift me up. Why should he lift you up? Lord, give me a big ministry. Why should he give you a big ministry? He's looking for those who will receive the gift, the grace, and remain in him so that they can bear fruit, so that he can be glorified. Matthew chapter 55, verse 14 said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. Let your light so what? Shine. So that what will happen? So that people might see and glorify your father in heaven. It's not about you. The light that God is giving to you is not about you. The money God is giving to you is not about you. The beauty is not about you. The house is not about you. The car is not about you. The ministry is not about you. As you flourish in ministry, as you flourish in business, your light is shining. He said, let people see and glorify God in heaven. Now let's pause there and look at this world. He gave me a light to shine. He said, let your light shine. And when the light is shining, automatically people will see me carrying the light. But he said, no, you must disappear and I must appear. You must take that light and shine it to God so that people can see. All attention should go to him. If God released the gift of healing on me and I go to the hospital and I pray for the sick and they get healed, it is wrong for me to now put my poster there on social media. Here come the greatest apostle of all time, the greatest star leader and the soothsayer. Who can heal the testimony, the light to do what? To go to God. Because when the light is shown and it points people to God, many people will come to Him. I will talk in this month. Am I talking to somebody this month? Now let's look at the quality of partnership. For partnership to, to be to, to be uh, uh, successful, we have to understand that there is a goal in this partnership. In this case, 
Unlike the world where profit is the goal, the case here is, is about soul. It's all about soul. It's all about the life of man. It's all about the destiny of man. It's all about people coming to the light of God. And for this, for every partnership being in the kingdom of God or out there in the business world to succeed, you must have this element in place. The first element is that there must be union. There must be relationship. You cannot have a partnership unless you are together. It is clear from the beginning of the end that God does not want any man to be alone. He said, it is not good. It is not good for man to be alone. So Jesus said, clearly in verse 4, remain in me and I in you. What Jesus is simply saying in the, in the language of the Panabita is that, let us be penetrated together. Join with grace super glue that nothing can take you away. Say, remain in me and I in you. Because the only way you can bear fruit, the only way this partnership can work is if you remain in me. No branch can bear fruit on its own. Remain in me. And I like the way the Amplified put it. He said, remain in me and I will remain in you. Such, just as no plant can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the man, neither can you bear fruit. And he said, that bearing fruit means producing evidence of your faith. You cannot produce any evidence of your faith. Because if you don't remain in him, your lifestyle will not point to him. I have met a great big man of God when we are talking and something happened. Somebody, another servant of God offended this person. And as we were talking there, big great men of God, we were all talking and the case came on and he said, I will never forgive. And I said to myself, whoa, is this person abiding in Christ? This is a great man of God with a great church. But he said, I will not. Because you don't know the pain it cause. And I thought to myself, what is this person preaching in the church? There is no evidence of the faith. A man who is not born again, hearing that, will be shut out of the kingdom of God. The second thing, after that union, relationship, you need to be united. You can be in relationship and not be united. You can tie two mad dogs together. But there is no union. How many people work in the same office but there is no union for their colleagues? How many people fellowship in the same house of God? We all belong to XYZ ministry but there is no unity. So Jesus is saying, remain in me, not only you in me, I must also be in you. Don't just stand next to me that I am a servant of God, I'm a child of God. Let Jesus be in you. You can be in church, but Jesus is not in you. He said, that's not what I want. So what he's saying is there are many who are in church. But Jesus is not in there. For you to bear fruit in this partnership, not only will you be in church, but Jesus must be in you. Unity. So that when the Spirit speaks, you pick up. Only then can you be bearing fruit in this partnership. 
And the third thing is harmony. Not only must we be united, not only must there be unity, not only should you be in relationship, there should be harmony. Two hearts must beat together as one. When he speaks, you hear. When he says sit, you sit. Jesus' desire is that we should not be cut off. That's why he was telling them, no branch can bear fruit except that branch remains in me. And child of God, we must do everything to make sure that we are not just attending church, but Jesus is in us. Every day when I wake up, I should ask myself, I'm in relationship with him. Is he in relationship with me? Am I carrying Jesus wherever I go? Because it is only when I do that, that I can bear fruit. Then when he bless me, I know, oh, thank you, Lord. It's not for me. It's for your kingdom. My assignment here is to remind us or to let you know that you are in partnership with God. You are in partnership with God. Many can say, how can I be in partnership with a great God? He's too big for me. He's interested in you. God did not create any useless person. God did not create any empty vessel. There is something he has deposited in you that you can use to bear fruit if you remain in him and he in you. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. He says, for we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's beauty. Second Corinthians, no, that is First Corinthians 3, 9. Second Corinthians 6, 1 says, as God's co-workers. See what he refers to us. You are co-workers with God. Co-worker. God is busy in heaven, touching the heart of men, preparing the heart of men. You are co-worker with him to help us there and bring them into the kingdom. That's why we are partners with him. Because God will not every time come down and give every man the same experience so hard on this road of Damascus. Some experience are just once off, but he has invested so much in us. And we are called co-workers. Oh, labor us with God. God is doing the spiritual aspect. You are here to do the physical aspect. And this means it is your duty to use every gift, every resources that God has given to you to advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming very soon. Is coming is sooner than expected. Souls need to be saved. We need to do the work of God with all urgency. And my assignment here is to let you know that you are not created to be a decoration on earth. Your assignment of being alive is not to wait to be counted as a statistic when census comes. Your assignment here is not just to enjoy eating and drinking. Your assignment is to know I am a co-laborer with God and together with God we need to populate the kingdom of heaven because Jesus is coming very soon. Should we prophesy? Yes. Should we pray for blessing? Yes. Should we pray for healing? Yes. Should we ask for new cars? Yes. Should we ask for promotion? Yes. But all these things are tools to advance the kingdom of God. They are tools to help us produce fruits. You should begin to ask yourself, Solomon, have you been bearing fruit? Solomon, is your light shining? Solomon, how many people have seen the way you live and they are impressed to come to God? 
If you can't answer the question, then maybe you can answer this. Are you ready to avail yourself to take up the assignment that God has given to you? Because everyone on earth is, a, is in partnership with God. From the smallest to the oldest. You are not a church attender or attendee, or what is that English? It's attendee. Right. It's English. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, Occupy till I come. What he means is that keep on bearing fruit. Keep on bearing fruit. Keep on bearing fruit. In case you are asking, God has not blessed me. Maybe the blessing has not come because you have not picked up the assignment of partnership. You are not doing your part. Let's go to John 15 and let me show you this. John 15, verse 16. Are you there? I want somebody to read. Because I'm talking to someone and say, no, I've been praying. The answer is not coming. I'm trusting God for a husband. I'm trusting God for a wife, for a car, for a job. And the answer is not coming. Let's see what the scripture says. John 15 verse 16. Okay. So we vote for you. <laughs> okay, stand up and read. Loud and clear. Aha. This is Jesus speaking. He said, you did not choose me. Okay, you are going too far. We want to get the juice of the matter here. He said, you did not choose me. I, Jesus, who died for you, who shed my blood for you, I decided, overlooking and ignoring the lies of the enemy, I chose you. He said, I chose you. The accuse of the enemy, I ignore it, I chose you. The, the, the witches and the wizards who are fighting you, I ignore them. I chose you. I chose you despite your error, your mistake. I chose you. I chose you to be in partnership with me. You don't know about partnership. It is me who saw you and saw what I have invested in you from the foundation of the earth. Then I chose you. Somebody say, he chose you. Say it like you mean, he chose me. Let the kingdom of darkness here, he chose me. God is speaking to somebody this morning. Maybe you look at your circumstances. You look at your limitation. Jesus is telling you, I chose you. Despite your flaws, I chose you. Despite your foundation, I chose you. That's why you are alive. So every time you wake up, you must say to yourself, I am awaiting this morning because he chose me. First Peter 2 verse 9, what did he say? You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. You are a holy nation. Out of many, you know when you go to the shop and you say you want to buy shoes and they put so many shoes there. Every shoe is said, take me, pick me, pick me. But you decided, this one no, this one no, this one. They say, this one. I chose this one. The seller can come and tell you, but this one is not as beautiful as this one. Say, I don't care, I chose this one. Say, but this one you are choosing is more expensive. 
I, why don't you choose a cheaper one? I don't care. I chose this one because it's my money. So when Jesus entered the sea, the devil is standing as the accuser of the brethren and he said, Jesus, you can't choose this one because this one is dirty. This one is filthy. This one used to lie. This one is coming from the house of witchcraft, wizard. And Jesus said, Satan, shut up. It is my blood. I shed my blood for this one. I chose this one. Say, so you did not choose me. I chose you. Why did I choose you? Why did I take the risk to choose you? Why did I ignore everyone to choose you? What did he say? Let's go back to that scripture. Uh huh. Quick, quick, quick. It's getting older. Uh -huh. I chose you. Uh huh. Hold on. He said, I chose you. Not only did I chose you, you know, in the football team. And I want you to get this picture here. I want you to know as we are going on that I am in partnership. He said, when I chose you, you see, the football coach, when there is a tournament or the netball team, what will happen is that the, the, the coach will go around scouting. He said, I chose this one. I chose this one. So he will choose about 30 or 40, depending. They are all chosen to be part of the team. But not all of them will play on the day of the match. So he will now appoint some. Say, the best 11, I put you on the field. So he said, I did not just choose you to be a bench woman. I did not choose you to be the reserve. I chose you and I appointed you. Other versions say, I ordained you. When you are ordained, it means authority has been given. It means power has been given. I chose you. And I appointed you. Oh, somebody is listening to me. It is not about your position. It is not about your pocket this morning. It is not about you did not have food at home this morning. It is about what Jesus said. He chose you and he appointed you. Why? For what? Uh huh. Uh -huh. He said, I chose you, I appointed you, so that you might go and do what? Bear fruit. And you know you can only bear fruit if you remain in him. Now, here is the gist of the matter. Once you acknowledge, he chose you, he appointed you, and he sent you go and bear fruit. What will happen? Fruit that will last. Not Chinese product food, standard food, food that will last. Yeah. Not the fruit today, it will break tomorrow. Fruit, yeah. quality fruit. <laughs> what will happen? So that wherever you are in my name, the Father will give you. <laughs> in this partnership, you can see that in every partnership, there is a reward yeah. for everyone. He said, I chose you to be this partnership. Yeah. You don't even have money to pay for that partnership. I paid my blood for yeah. you to be in that partnership. Yeah. And I gave you the resources yeah. free of time. But your assignment is go and bear fruit. And for everyone that invests in any partnership, yeah. there must be a reward. Yeah. And what is that reward? When you bear fruit, whatever you ask, in my name, I will give unto you. That's why I said, maybe why your prayer has not been answered is because you are not bearing fruit. If you want your prayer to be answered, rise up, pick up your portfolio, start bearing fruit, start fulfilling your function in this partnership, and God will keep his path. Hallelujah. Do you need a wife? Bear fruit. Do you need a husband? Bear fruits. You need promotion? Bear fruits. You need healing? Bear fruits. Then ask. After you have done that, you can now go back to him and say, 
Dear partner, I have done my part in this partnership. Hallelujah. Now I need a car. Then they will check. We are faithful. We, 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 we don't do power now. We don't promise and fail. Solomon has done his part and is asking for a car. Give the car. Are you getting what we are sharing this morning? Are you fighting any battle? Bear fruit. Are you trusting God for your children? Bear fruit. Bearing fruit calls for sacrifice. If I want my children to serve God, let me look for the children of others and begin to bear fruit. Invest in them. Pray for them. It says, in grace, say, give, and it shall be one. We are in partnership. God is looking for fruit. And you are the branch who needs to bear the fruit. There is a reward. But to get it, you need to bear fruit. Jesus is coming soon. And like I told you in my message to you at the beginning of the year, there is a job to be, I mean, the beginning of the month, there is a job to be done. There is a field to be sown and water. There is a harvest to be reaped. God is looking for those who are ready to take up the mantle of partners. Are you that person? What a privilege to be chosen. What a privilege to be appointed. What a privilege to be sent to go and bear fruit. It's time to forget about your needs. It's time to forget about your enjoyment. It's time to forget about putting yourself first. It's now about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. Unto you. My prayer for you this morning is that you will hit this call. You will rise up as a chosen one. You will rise up as the one that has been ordained and appointed. You will go out there and start bearing fruit. Let your light so shine. Let people see and glorify your Father in heaven. That when Jesus comes, you will hear that word. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful partner. Well done, good and faithful co-laborer. Come to the place that has been prepared for you. That is the ultimate for every child of God. God is ready. Resources are ready. The question is, are you ready to go or continue in partnership with God? I pray for you this morning that you will remain in Christ. You will not be caught up. I pray that you will continue to bear fruit and fruit that will last. Remember, God is faithful. All that prayer request is nothing to God. Just fulfill your parts in this partnership and all other things shall be added on you. Let's rise on our feet as we go to prayer. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and celebrate God. Hallelujah. Somebody declare this morning, I'm in partnership with God. I am going out as a chosen person, as an ordained person. I shall bear fruit. I shall bear quality fruit. I shall bear fruit that will last in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe God is looking down at Roy Assembly this morning and he said, Yeah, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they caught it. They caught what I've been trying to tell them. They get it. I see them moving. I see them doing exploits because we are ready to take our position in partnership with God. Hallelujah.
We're going to pray this morning. Before I start to release the prophetic declaration for the month of May, I want you to pray for yourself. Hallelujah. But before we pray, as we all close our eyes, for those who are here and those who are watching online, man, he He said, remain in me. You cannot remain in somebody you don't know. You cannot remain in somebody you don't have knowledge of. You cannot be in this partnership you don't have relationship. So if you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you've not invited him into your heart. You've been hearing about it. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about being baptized when you are a child. I'm talking about relationship with him. And you desire to be a partner. You desire to be a fruit. Knowing that so, there are so many blessings attached to it. I want to pray with you. I want to lead you to Christ this morning. I want you to invite Jesus into your heart. I want you to accept him this morning as your Lord and Savior. If you are that person, he said today, I want to pray that prayer. Those who are here and those who are online, as you close our eyes and bow our heads down, just lift up your hand wherever you are. Lift up your hand wherever you are, and I'm going to pray with you. Thank you, thank you. Kaliba Satalia Nerebo, Shekayaba Satalia. Or perhaps you once, you have once accepted him, but right now you are not in him. You are in the church, but it's not in you. You want to repent and come back. I also want to lift up your hand. Those who are in the house, thank you for those hands, and thank you. And I believe those who are connecting all that. We want to pray this prayer of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. I thank you. My old ways. I invite you into my heart. Come into my heart and dwell there as I surrender to you. I will serve you all the days of my life. And I declare Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Kayaba Delebos Kaya. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hand wherever you are. If you have prayed that prayer, and those who are online just want to pray with you before I lead us in some prayer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring your children for you. Those who are coming for the first time and those who are repenting and coming home. Today, let your mercy speak over their life. Let the blood that has not lost its power manifest itself in their life in the name of Jesus. As they are coming back home, receive them. Receive them, Lord. Receive them as we rejoice in you. And from this moment, I pray the enemy will not have access into your life. The enemy will not have stronghold over your life anymore. From this day, you will rise up and start to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Your light will shine. People will see and they will glorify your Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I just have to pray a point for you. Then we'll cross over and begin to release the prophetic declaration. Hallelujah. Just prepare your heart. I want you to pray and say, Lord, help me to remain in you. Lord, help me to remain in you. Just continue to pray. Tell God, Father, I refuse, refuse to be uprooted. I refuse to be cut off. Help me to remain in you. For only by remaining in you shall I be a fruit. Help me, Lord Jesus, to remain in you in the 